Okay, so the critical things are really to enforce the engineering standards. In fact, we're utilizing the international code as a basis. We're use it using best practices. So we are ensuring that uh, the standards are built. Uh, all buildings will have to go through a process to be approved. So they are submitted to the local authorities and they are sent to the various agencies right through up to be approved. Once they are approved, they are now they are monitored in terms of the construction. So, for example, the size of your rebars are determined by how many stories the building will have. Also, a question of earthquake um, design buildings, so the buildings will be able to absorb uh, 7.5 or better um, earthquakes depending on the altitude of the building. So a 10-story building, for example, would have a different specification than a dwelling house. But each one has a specification based on the international standards and best practices. Gracias, Ministro. Eh, ya casi vamos a... uh, thank you very much, Mr. Minister. We will now open up the forum for questions. But prior to that, I would like to ask each one of you with just one phrase to tell us what each one of your governments will have to correct as a priority or more urgently, thinking of two issues. Number one, that these changes that have been introduced to be better prepared for disasters were introduced after a good number of years, no, the years of victims and of losses, and that always changes will take longer than what would wish to. And number two, considering that climate change does not wait, that every year it is more rain, uh, there's more precipitation when we're supposed not to have precipitation and always takes us aback. So what do you think each one of your governments should introduce quickly, immediately, as a top priority to avoid victims in the next disaster? Continue an emphasis on prevention and uh, uh, building awareness of the population in the population of the risks that we face. We have a pending challenge with this, the re uh, regulatory framework. It is a national civil protection law, which I think is the most immediate challenge. And the other thing that I would like to mention has to do with rendering more visible in the media and in different informal channels risk management issues and prevention for all of the population. Understanding that in these 20 years and from the victims and disasters that we have experienced, the civil society, the organizations, institutions, agencies of the United Nations system, and the civil society, NGOs, uh, private companies, have led and are being uh, trained and, and sensibilized on everything that has to do with being a part of the solution and working towards a better response. Minister. Uh, putting legislation in the Parliament of, of Trinidad and Tobago as it relates uh, land use policy. In fact, the government has already laid uh, the legislation um, that will seek to uh, guide uh, land developers and even citizens and so on, whereby on what level or what height they could build on hillsides and mountainsides and so on. And, uh, what land will be allocated for agricultural purposes and so on. So the legislation has been laid. It will be debated at some stage in the uh, legislative term. And of course, um, allocating greater financing for building uh, a sense of education and sensitization as it relates to uh, disaster management and risk reduction. I believe that in Ecuador it is also necessary to have a regulation that uh, avoids uh, the anarchic growth of many cities and new human settlements uh, uh, that are not allowed. So I think we should carry out a coordinated work at the different government levels 
And I also believe that uh, citizens must understand that the right to safety has to be guaranteed. One would think that the citizens still do not perceive that safety is a huge uh, thing, a huge good that has to be taken care of. It's not right to allow for any precarious building of a house to occur. We have, if that happens, we have uh, um, land uh, traffickers. Uh, we have authorities in decentralized governments which promote this kind of illegal settlement uh, that do not protect the citizens. And so we have the growth of urban marginal neighborhoods where it is obvious an absence of the state in these uh, areas. So we have to avoid this through legislation. And secondly, we have to get the citizens to understand that it is the state's obligation to guarantee their right to safety. Uh, thank you, Minister. We will continue. We are working on a dis disaster reduction management policy, which we hope to complete that very, very soon. That's a high priority. We also need to increase our disaster fund because although we have a national law insurance policy, we have not been able to get a pair from that policy to date. Uh, the second, the third thing I would like to say is that we would like to have every single Jamaican be warned via telephone or the public media in the advent of a disaster. Therefore, the utilization of the communication network uh, as an instant information, a warning sign is a critical thing that we are actually working to try to implement. Thank you very much, Minister. I have many questions. Some will not be asked because they have already been answered. And I will begin by one which is directed to the Minister of Honduras. What methodologies were taken into consideration for uh, this uh, risk, uh, disaster risk management, and where can we find them? Well, we have implemented in an integrated uh, manner the cross-sectional risk management systems. And when we talk about uh, the safety of the people, this is uh, linked uh, to a human settlement uh, that has been anarchic, and that's where historically we have the greatest uh, security problems for us to be able to work with communities and letting them know the need that exists and the credibility of the regulation uh, institution has allowed us to go into areas where historically it has not been safe, and we can do so with credibility. The systems can be found in the COPECO website, as well as within the institution. There are projects that work with communities in establishing physical works, but also not structural works, uh, such as strengthening of uh, municipal emergency committees, local committees, as well as these actions, uh, the actions that uh, to, uh, to the uh, benefit of the population. I have many questions for the Minister of Education of Ecuador. They are not really about the topics, so those I will be giving you. And will not read them, only those that have to do with disasters. Now, considering that educational centers are used as uh, provisional shelters in the case of a disaster, how is the education system prepared for this? You were saying, you were speaking recently of how to avoid the loss of lessons in an emergency. But when you need to use classrooms and schools uh, for shelters for families, what do you do? Yes, with the Secretariat for Risk Management, we have identified which are the establishments that could be used as shelters in the case of a disaster. 
in the moment of an emergency, the priority is not uh, for school not to be interrupted, for the school year not to be interrupted. The emphasis and the priority is to protect the citizens, the people in a situation of a disaster. But what we want is to try to get back to normal as soon as possible. One of the things we're working on right now with the Secretariat of Race Management is to have alternative shelters, for example, to use uh, coliseums, sports infrastructure, which when used will not necessarily imply that we will need to suspend our schooling activities. But this is a process in which we are still working with the Secretariat. This other question is not focused, but I will ask it uh, directly to the Minister of Jamaica. It says, in a disaster, who, the person who first uh, gets uh, the request of help is the municipality, the local government. Are the municipalities trained? Do they have the capacity and staff to tend to the demands of a disaster? Minister of Jamaica. They are trained and we try every year and continuously to upgrade their capabilities. Nevertheless, of course, they have a lack of resources, that's financial resources. And we have a regulation that asks them to set aside 20% of part of their funding for disasters, but invariably because the councils are underfunded, they tend to utilize that fund. But I would like to say that uh, being the first responders on the scene, they were able to stabilize the situation until the, uh, the security forces, the police or the army gets in place. So the critical role they have to play is to be the first responders, to be on spot, to ensure that the situation is under control. And they are trained, they have some resources, and um, so far so they, it has been able to effectively deal with situations we have had to experience. Thank you. This doesn't have a, a destination, but I'm going to ask it to the Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. Do you have measurable indicators in time to be able to make policies of state effective regarding disaster risk reduction? If you, could you clarify when you say uh, indicators in terms of... Um, measurement in, in relation to responses? I think the person who, write, uh, who wrote says if you have a limit, time limit, time frame uh, to be successful applying that uh, policies. Well, time, uh, policy in terms of response time and so on will always be something that is uh, debatable in relation to uh, for each society and how it is um, evolved. At the end of the day, um, you would want your policy level to be decisive and, and, and clinical in relation to what you have to deal with from the point of view of disaster um, responses and, and risk management and so on. Um, from where I sit, to say that I have an exact indicator in terms of timelines and so on. Um, no, from, from where I sit, but at the level of, of the government of Trinidad and Tobago, and like all governments do, uh, these things will be uh, dealt with dependent upon your, your overall political manifesto, your overall policy position and so on, from the point of view of any, any government. And like all things being equal, it, it has to do with a sense of uh, the political will and also the level of monies that are be, uh, uh, to, to be allocated and so on. And sometimes even the most trained and the most equipped and the most developed societies, based on the, the magnitude of a disaster, an entire society could freeze it. Thank you, Minister. And this for the Minister of Security of Argentina. Most countries have building codes but these are not respected or enforced. How do you guarantee, in your case, the compliance with these codes? Well, this has to do with the regulations of each municipality and each province that is uh, sovereign 
and, and has uh, um, authority for this work. There is a regulatory framework in each jurisdiction, but this is not a competence of the security ministry, the area of urban building, clearly. Yes, I would like to add another one here that says, how can other sectors such as the ministries, for example, of agriculture, infrastructure, tourism can be involved. And this is for you, even though it's not specifically related to anyone, because you were talking of the importance of uh, having a cross-sectional action between the different